God's looking for somebody to stand in the gap. You're having coffee with Conrad on Conrad Rocks! La, 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 la. Welcome everyone to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net coming to you with a raspy voice. I know, I know, it's not cool to do this, but I got to bring you a podcast. Man, it's going to be a busy week, and I have to late. I have to do these podcasts like you know in advance. This week is so busy for me. Um, yeah, I got a lot of stuff going on. I have to get these in the queue here. So anyway, why is my voice rousy? It's because of disobedience. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something stupid I did. Something stupid I did when I know better so that maybe you can learn from it. I know I learned from it and I knew better. I knew better. You know, my last podcast, dude, it was cool. It was awesome. A new perspective on an old pond. You know, in an old park, basically. I've been going to this park and been praying there and walking and speaking revelation into the phone. And uh, anyway, the other day, when I was going to the park, I was kind of in disobedience. Now, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to major too much on this, but maybe I should major too much on this. In the morning before... When I'm in, in a little bit of a prayer mode, you know, we have a relationship with God. Let me kind of preface this. When you're saved, you know, you find out that God is a spirit. He speaks to you through scripture and he also speaks to you in your daily life that will not violate scripture. And the Holy Spirit says things to you and he will show you things to come. He's a comforter. And in Ephesians 6, 18, you know, we're supposed to watch in prayer, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching there too with all perseverance and supplications for all saints, for all saints. So when we pray, a lot of people have been sending me email over the years. They're like, why do I see people's faces pop up? Well, <laughs> this is the spirit of God saying you need to pray for that person. So continue to pray. God's a spirit. Those who worship him must do so in spirit and truth. And you develop a relationship with God, and then things things ring true, like my sheep know my voice. So you know when it's God and when it's not God, but that comes from experience. It's just like knowing your family member. How many times does your brother or sister have to talk to you till you finally go, well, that's their voice? You know? And, you know, I'm thinking of uh, the supplanter, Jacob. You know, his it, there's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Isaac was tricked, but he knew the voice. He said, "Man, that's not that's not Esau." But it feels like he went by feeling. He didn't go by what he heard. He went by his feelings. So, one of the things we need to not lean to is our feelings because it's of the flesh. You know, but I understand when people say, "I sense something in the spirit," they're, th that's what they're meaning. I sense something spiritually, but they might say, "Oh, I feel this." So it's just basically bad language. We develop a relationship with God, the Spirit of God. You know, Jesus went up to the garden to go pray. And he knew when those people were showing up. He knew that, that Nathaniel was under the fig tree. He wasn't there. He's, in the New Age, we call that remote viewing. There is a spiritual thing going on. You know, Elisha heard the king of uh, Syria across hundreds of miles. You know what he was saying in his bedchamber. There's spiritual stuff going on. So when God gives you this stuff in prayer, it's a good idea to keep praying. You know, a few things about prayer. One of the things is this. When you get into prayer with a group of people, and uh, you're doing like an Acts 13 type prayer, there's this crescendo 
you know, you enter the you enter the gates and you enter the courts with thanksgiving and praise. You get in and there's this crescendo of this spiritual stuff going on and you can sense it in your spirit. And then you can kind of sense it when it subsides. And I was look I was pondering on all these aspects recently of like how much unbelief is in the room? How much faith is in the room? And these are things I ponder of, and I'm like going, how much am I thinking too much during this prayer when I need to really lean into the Spirit? Sounds pretty interesting, doesn't it? It's like prophetic stuff, but I'm going to tell you, it's not really prophetic. That's one of the things, that's one of my pet peeves. Walking after the Spirit, my sheep know my voice. A lot of us are called to do just simple spiritual things that wouldn't be called prophetic. You know, if Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice, are you his sheep? <laughs> right? And they follow me and I know them. You got to you got to recognize the master's voice. Anyway, so I'm thinking about all this stuff and then all of a sudden I've got this sore throat. I'm like going, "Man, I know why I have this sore throat." It's because that morning I was shown this vision, this snapshot of where I was supposed to pray to get the revelation. I was supposed to pray in this certain park, go to a park bench, show them the whole thing, and write in my Chromebook. And I didn't because I let the Martha thing take over. <laughs> you know, so this is so you know not to do this. Now, there is the good, perfect, and acceptable will of God, like we were talking about in Romans 12, too. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm just doing the acceptable today. But basically, the higher calling, you know, was to do the other thing. So I went there this morning to go pray with my Chromebook. Beautiful day. And the pollen, though, is attacking my throat. Little fiery darts of the enemy is what it feels like. But, uh, you know, I didn't have the shield of faith when I was supposed to go the other day. I didn't put up my shield of faith. I should have followed the Lord. So anyway, because of that, you know, I went, the pond was up in the air on the day that I went to the, the fresh new revelation of the same pond. They were mowing and that pond was going up in the air and this guy was mowing. <laughs> he was grading the baseball diamonds, the dirt, and that dirt just kind of went into a cloud and attacked me. I'm like, well, you know what? I'm probably going to pay for this. So anyway. Praise God, we can learn from these little things. Life's not over. We just get back up and go. Amen. So recently, this is going to tie into something else. You know, America is, people, America is in a problem right now. Look at what's going on in Baltimore. I read something that went in Seattle. Look at what's going on in D.C. I mean, they're voting on the Bible. <laughs> Basically. I'm like, what are we, why are people trying to vote? on traditional marriage. Secular people trying to rewrite the Bible. America is in trouble. Don't have to be prophetic. You just have to open the newspaper or check your news feed, RSS. Man, it's an amazing time to be alive, isn't it? All this technology. Just think for a second. Just think back in the 50s. Fire and brimstone preachers. Dude, if you go back before that, I'm going to tell you something. I'm reading a little bit by D.L. Moody, some of his memoirs. And we were reading about American revivals and how they happened. Dude, in the 1800s, people would sue pastors if they wouldn't let them take communion. I mean, and the pastors were... Calvinism, Calvinism was extremely strong back then. But... um People were just, they wanted to be a part of the church, badly. And then a lot of the pastors said, well, I need to see evidence of a changed life. Now, take what's going on back then. You know, when they used to publish sermons in the newspaper, right? Look back then, and now fast forward to today. Can you see there is a pattern? It keeps getting worse and worse, and I believe that this iniquity was exacerbated with the use of media. 
So, we have the National Day of Prayer. I was talking about yielding to the Spirit rather than yielding to the flesh. A lot of people don't want to follow the Spirit. We want to follow our own selfish desires. And a lot of us that want to see revival in America, we're upset because people aren't repenting. So, then we think, we're going to play the hopeless card. You know, like, oh, things are hopeless. Why even go to the National Day of Prayer? (laughs) You know, why even go? It's terrible, you know? So, what I'm thinking of, I wanted to remind you a couple of things here. Daniel, he interceded, confessed, and repented for a nation. (laughs) Okay? I know it was the timing of the Lord to deliver Israel from Babylon, but he did it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not bow the knee to the government decree of worshiping the statue when music played. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they kind of interceded for Israel because that that little bit of obedience... I mean, it may not seem like a little bit because they were threatened to be burned with fire. But you know how Jesus says, my yoke is easy, my burden's light? To them, it was a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. That's why I say it's a little act of obedience. It's a big act of obedience, but it was a little, you know, you had to do little deliberation. No, not bound to your statue. No, not worshiping your statue. I'm serving the living God. So because of that, a whole nation, Nebuchadnezzar even writes a chapter in the Bible, you know, thou shalt worship the, the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, remember that? And then remember in Moses, in chapter 32 of Exodus, he interceded. God was going to destroy Israel. And one man stood in the gap. You know, he said, hey, Lord, you know, the Egyptians are going to say, that you took us out here for folly. And uh, so he he reasoned with the Lord, and the Lord did not destroy them at that time. Amen? And Psalm 106.23, Therefore he said that he would destroy them, had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath, lest he should destroy them. So what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to talk about not being hopeless. I, I, I'm i struggling with this, too. I mean, America is just like on this train to hell, okay? And it's easy to lose hope. But I'm going to show you, the Bible says he's looking for somebody to stand in the gap. It's called intercession. And that's what this National Day of Prayer is about. We need to, me and you need to intercede together, locking arms in arm, to intercede for this nation. What's it going to look like when we stand before God on Judgment Day? And he'll go, hey, what, you know, what's up with this National Day of Prayer thing? That was the last chance to stand in the gap. And you, you didn't do it. <laughs> I'm not trying to guilt you into it, but I'm asking you to, to examine yourself. Are you in the faith? Do you believe what the Bible says? Do you believe in standing in the gap for America? You know, 2 Chronicles 7.14, it doesn't say, if the wicked heathen turn from their ways and repent. It says, if my people which are called by my name. Right? That's us. That's Christians. We've got to stand in the gap. This scripture came to me, Ezekiel 22.28-31, And her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, seeing vanity, and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. You know, Jesus said there's going to be false prophets. Many will arise. Tickling our ears. 
Verse 29, the people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy. Yeah, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. In verse 30, and I sought for a man. He didn't say men. It says, and I sought for a man. In verse 30. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it. But I found none. Therefore have I poured out mine indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. So we need to stand in the gap. We need to do it. I mean, look, if, if if you're hopeless, I get it. I completely, I, I get it. But you know what? God needs somebody to stand in the gap. And God needs somebody to believe what he said here. He said, if there's a man. You know, and we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive those things done in the body, whether good or bad. 2 Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one of us may receive those things done in the body, whether good or bad. So, I'm going to ask you to pray about praying. We need to link up. We need to be in unity. John 17, God, Jesus wants us to unite. That's the Lord's Prayer. And I believe we need to fast and pray for this nation at the same time. You know, look at what happened to Nineveh. You know, Jonah, Jonah came in there just... One man, Jonah was one man. He didn't want to do it, but he did. He finally yielded what the Spirit of the Lord said. Jonah, four chapters, you can read it. And they saw they saw Jonah go in halfway into this big city. And he was probably all, his skin was probably all messed up from being in the belly of the fish or whatever. Can you imagine? And uh, they repented. One man. Look at the, Look at what God can do. Through one man. What if, you know, it says one can put a thousand, fly two, ten thousand. What if we join together for the National Day of Prayer and intercede earnestly and fervently? Amen? Just pray about it. What's God want you to do? Do you want to do your own thing? Or do you want to do what the Spirit of the Lord wants you to do? I mean, it's, this is com- it's coming to a point. It's coming to a point where we need to make a decision. Are we going to be with God or are we going to be with our flesh? I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but I'm worried about America. I'm worried about our salvation. You know, I'm worried about us. I want us to get crowns in heaven. <laughs> you know, I want us I want us to be approved unto God. So pray about it. National Day of Prayer. We've got a couple of things going on here uh Wednesday night. National Day of Prayer at Senatobia will be at First Baptist Church the night before. It starts at 11 o'clock on 317 South Ward Street. You can play in, pray until uh, 6 in the morning. Wednesday, May 6th, we're going to kick things off praying there at the church. The pastors, uh, Chris Williams, is awesome for letting us do that. The next day, we're going to be in um, Gabbert Park, which is behind the library in Senatobia, Mississippi, at 1130 in the morning. Uh, we'll be praying and worshiping there for a little bit. And then we have another event. This is the big one in South Haven. Uh, it will be at the Brown Baptist on Sweeney Road at 6 p.m. A lot of mayors will be there, and it's going to be awesome. Now, if you can't go, just look up the National Day of Prayer to Soda County, Mississippi, or just get on the Internet and, and do a search. Go to a National Day of Prayer event in your city. We need to lift up the name of Jesus and beseech the Lord diligently to heal our land. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of Conrad Rocks. Uh, Remember, if this has touched you, this blog is supported by people just like you. I do have a support page. Amen. So check that out. And also, on your favorite episodes, please remember to share them on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, whatever. God bless you. Till we meet again, dig deeper. And go higher.
Hi, this is John, John Shabba House. This is the Kid Renegade Redeemed with Forever Redeemed Ministries. This is Amy from Amy Daily. This is Tiffany White with Hey Ministries. This is Dan the Coffee Man. This is Glenda Linkus from WingsOfProphecy.com. Jill Dyson from Angel Street Ministry. This is Drew Teacup Ministry for Women. This is Marianne Sansom from Google Plus. This is Charles Michael from France. This is Ministries.org. Jackie Smith from the Intentional Christian Panure Podcast. This is Janet with Overcoming Abuse God's Way. Spreading-joy.org. This is Gerald Thomas in New Hebron, Mississippi. This is the Mordecai from Oklahoma. This is Vicki at Michael's House of New Beginnings. This is Stephen Barrett from Holy Fire, Japan. We are Andy Coffee with Conrad. ConradRocks.net. Conrad Rocks. Tune in radio.